Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons, and today we're going to talk about DNS over TLS and DNS over HTTP. And really, we're going to talk mostly about DNS over HTTP. Um, roughly the same, one rides over TLS alone, one rides over HTTPS, uh, which has TLS underlying, so it's just an additional layer of transport there um, with DNS over HTTP. But that's what I want to focus on today because um, you know there's some more interesting developments uh, in the industry, specifically over DNS uh, over HTTP and how browsers are not only implementing that, but uh, you know starting to make a play to uh, enforce that. And and so you know we're going to talk about the technical sides, and then we're just going to talk about some of the ramifications for the industry from user perspective, provider perspective, security perspective, all the above. So let's get started. All right, let's take a brief detour to kind of look at how DNS works in the first place. You have, you know, a client out in the internet somewhere and they want to go to, you know, devcentral.f5.com because they love it and it's exciting and they would get to learn new things. And so they will ask uh, through their infrastructure a LDNS service that they are uh, configured for either because uh, the router that you have established in your infrastructure, whether it's just your home or, or uh, you know, an enterprise, uh, you know, will will come out and and request that service. And so LDNS could be within your uh, organization, or, or or coming out to some kind of a cache resolver. But anyway, this uh, typically for a client is you know unencrypted over UDP. Um, and that's on port 53. Now you can also make TCP requests on port 53, but primarily uh, requests are UDP uh, port uh, 53. And so they'll get a response, and that response will come back to the client, and then they can make their HTTP request to go out to the address that they were given for Dev Central. And that's the way DNS has worked for, you know, 30 plus years, 40 plus years, I, I don't know. Um, it's been a long time. And so there's a disruptive force now uh, with new standards for DNS over TLS and DNS over HTTPS. And what happens there is you have your client and instead of making a request for Dev Central over UDP 53, you come out to the world and you make a uh, an encrypted request straight to uh, that DNS service over HT uh, HTTPS, and that's uh, port 443. And so then you make a request um, out to Dev Central, and so you don't have to uh, worry about uh, you know an attacker getting in the middle. Uh, so, it, like if you're sitting at a coffee shop and you're making this request to UDP 53, maybe there's a service sitting in that coffee shop that has been uh, compromised, and it's going to give you a bad answer for that query that you made. Well, if you're Queries are going over to this LDNS, like you know, Cloudflare has one, Cloudflare, um, or uh, even Google offers uh, DH, uh, DOH. Um, wh when you're coming over here, then that that uh, that coffee shop uh, infected uh, resolver is not going to see that request, so it cannot inject the problem there. So. We'll get to some of the security uh, concerns about that shift here in a little bit, but I, I wanted to talk briefly about the, um, the different ways on F5 technology that you can you know, in, inject your uh, configuration in environment, either on the client side or the server side. And the way that works, and if you go out to Dev Central, you can look up an article called Unbreaking the Internet, and Eric Chen details kind of a client side for, you know, say that the clients don't support uh, DOH. What do you do about that? Or, or uh, uh, DOT, and, and how do you support that? And so what you can do on a, on a big IP is 
send you know, your normal uh, UDP 53 request to the big IP. And then the big IP can then apply a uh, server um, SSL uh, profile to that and then change that UDP 53, take the payload of that request and then convert that from a normal DNS request and, and bundle it into an HTTP request. And so you can apply a server SSL profile uh, to come out to uh, say this, this um, you know, server that's you know, Cloudflare. And, and it will make that request on behalf of the client and then you, know, you get your encrypted request back and then you can then repackage that into a UDP response to the client and then the client can make its normal HTTP request out to you know, Dev Central. And so you can do this over um, uh, you know, DOT or DO, DOH. This one is uh, specific to DOH. But then you can also uh, do the flip side. You can take clients who are making encrypted requests. Um, so we have an encrypted request coming in to a big IP. And then this request here is a DA, DOH request um, or DOT. And then you could take the big IP, unpackage that, send that payload back to your local um, DNS servers. And then, uh, you know, that doesn't necessarily need to be encrypted in your uh, controlled infrastructure. And then you can turn around and send that encrypted response back. So you definitely have options on, on Big IP to handle the, uh, the protocols themselves, either from a client side or a server side. And so what I wanted to talk about now is what are the implications of all of this? And uh, from a client perspective, you, you do get uh, some additional security, especially hanging out in coffee shops if you're, you know, if you're concerned about your internet service providers and what they may be doing with the, your, your resolution data. So if you are hitting all these different sites and you don't want your ISPs um, you know, peeking in to your queries, then, then you, know, you can uh, encrypt those and then you know, your ISPs don't have that data. But you know, so what some of the security concerns are is it's not really changing uh, the, the threat of your data being exposed, it's just shifting it, right? So in here, uh, this is typically your, let me do a different color here. Typically, in this scenario, your ISP has that data. Um, and in this scenario down here, it's just, you know, whoever the DNS providers are, they have that data. And so whether it's Cloudflare or Google or any of the other ones that the browsers are going to support, um, now it's, it's they're controlling your resolution data. And, uh, you know, an argument that uh, 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 Forrester's um, uh, David Holmes says is that, you know, in, in Google's case with the Chrome, they, they already have that data uh, in your browser. And so providing that service to bypass the ISP looking at that data, it doesn't really benefit Google at all to do that. And so likely this is just a play for them to provide more security for users. And so there's arguments on the other side where, you know, maybe that's not the case. But uh, so it's a, an interesting conversation in the industry on who controls your data, who can control your data, where are we going to shift that bar. But there's also a lot of uh, security people who are concerned about encrypting DNS, which is odd because, you know, security has been screaming for, uh, for years, encrypt everything, but now the DNS is getting encrypted. Whoa, 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 let's, let's back the truck up a little bit. And some of the concerns are just, you know, the tooling uh, that exists today. And what do you do about visibility into where these queries are going? And again, with, with an enterprise uh, situation, that's not really a problem uh, because you can inspect if, if you force your clients internally to go to um, still request uh, UDP 53, then uh, you can 
uh, then you can inspect internally before that request goes out from your infrastructure. Um, and even the ISPs themselves, they have a play here, right? Because the initial request um, here is not to your website, it's to look up these, right? And so if you have the addresses for that, and as an ISP you don't want to play nice, you could just respond to the requests to look up Cloudflare and Google with an, an X domain, and then, then they say, hey, uh, we don't know that that domain exists um, uh, for, for that particular uh, query. And so then the browser's like, well, what do I do now? Well, they're, they're defaulted at this point to, you know, go back to regular DNS, and so, you know, they can bypass that altogether. So, so it, there's going to be this cat and mouse game for a while of, okay, well, they're doing that now. How can I better protect that scenario? So, you know, it's, it, it's an interesting situation with the way that uh, the DNS is evolving, but it's neat to see DNS actually evolving. It's, it's really been, you know, uh, a, a feature here or there along the way, but it's, it's pretty much been the same for a, a long, long time. So, um, in a nutshell, that's, that's uh, DNS over HTTPS. If you have any questions, um, you know, drop them in the comments. If you like this video, please click subscribe, and uh, we'll see you out there in the community.